welcome to this course on global marketing management and we were talking about global marketing strategies that are uh, which is spread over module 16 and 17 and uh, now we will talk about module 17 in this we will talk about uh, global marketing strategy the interface of R&D operations and marketing regionalization of global marketing strategy and how to go about doing competitive analysis now uh, now uh, to start with just keep in mind that because of increased competition and reduced product life cycles changing technology now the global marketing managers they do not have the flexibility and time to look at these three operate uh, these three uh, three functions that is r and d operations and marketing as three different functions they have to look at these three uh, three uh, independent functions uh, as a integrated seamless chain any global uh, global marketer which looks at these three functions as uh, 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 as different functions that is a sure shot recipe for failure so therefore in order now in with changing times in order to be successful global marketing managers have to look at this uh, seamless integration of r and d operations and and, uh, and manufacturing now let us look at uh, the uh, uh, the benefits and the uh, shortcomings of global marketing strategy so it is not only that global marketing strategy has only advantages there are several disadvantages uh, of global marketing strategy or as well but let us start with looking at the benefits of global marketing strategy now one is the cost reduction because now because of economies of scales and scopes and scope that gives lo lo uh, lots of advantage in terms of economies of scales now they are selling to a large number of uh, people across the world second is because of standardization it leads to improved product and program uh, marketing program effectiveness now when this uh, brand is uh, is available across the world everybody knows about it and that leads to increased customer preferences and all these three put together will will uh, g give rise to increased competitive advantage let us move on to the limitations glo of global marketing one problem here is of standardization versus adaptation issue how much should be adopted and how much should be standardized globalization versus localization what components of the study should be globalized and what what component should be localized global integration and local responsiveness how far should we have global integration and where we should be locally sensitive sensitive and then the scale and sensitivity you go in for more number of uh, more amount of economies of scales that leads to lesser sensitivity more sens sensitivity means more local responsiveness more localization more adaptation and that uh, and then you will lose on the scale, uh, economies of scales now let us look at global marketing strategy keep in mind that global marketing is not about standardizing the marketing process on a global basis it does not mean that we are standardizing the marketing process it does not in any case means that we are standardizing the marketing process on the global basis although every element of the marketing process for example the product design product and brand positioning brand name packaging pricing advertising and execution promotion and distribution may be a candidate for standardization but it does not mean that we will standardize all of them and not every element need to be standardized to the same extent so some may be standard, standardized to a larger extent and some other elements may be standardized to a lesser extent and this degree of product standardization is dependent on a variety of factors so standardization is just one part of global marketing strategy and it may not may or may not be used by the company depending on the mix of the product market conditions stages of market development and inclination of the multinational firms ma uh, management so keep in mind that it is just one part of the global marketing strategy and it may not be necessary that the company is standardizing everything to the same extent how much is to be standardized will depend upon a mix of product and market conditions how far is the market developed stage of market development and inclination what does the multinational firms uh, firm want to do for instance a marketing element can be global without being 
हंड्रेड परसेंट यूनिफॉर्म इन कंटेंट और कवरेज अज्यूम दैट दिस फॉर्म डज नॉट हैव ए मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फैसिलिटी इन ईच कंट्री सर्व सो द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस में भी ग्लोबल बट इट मे नॉट इट मे नॉट बी हंड्रेड परसेंट यूनिफॉर्म इन द कंटेंट और कवरेज द एक्सटेंट दैट वेरियस मार्केट्स हैव यूनिफॉर्म कंटेंट एंड सिमिलर ऑपरेशन देयर इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर कोऑर्डिनेशन विद मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फैसिलिटीज अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड ऑल्सो वेयर कंटेंट इज नॉट यूनिफॉर्म any change any change requires non uniform content of distribution and therefore a corresponding change in the product or packaging therefore a global marketing strategy requires more intimate linkages with the firms other function so this is more important that global marketing strategy requires closed linkages with firms other function such as research and development manufacturing and finance now this figure shows the variation in content and coverage of global marketing on the x axis we have extent of uniform content and on the y axis we have extent of worldwide coverage now you see that this product it is near to 100% of uniform content and it is also near to 100% of the wor uh, uh, world's uh, market coverage so this company has a product that is nearly uniform across the world but you see that the pricing is not the same across the world and similarly sales, sales promotion is not th same across the world so the product is the only thing in the uh, in the marketing process in the marketing mix that is somewhat you ha that has uh, that is somewhat uniform in content and coverage across the world and as for any strategy global marketing strategy is one component of global strategy so from global strategy comes your global hr strategy and global technology strategy global finance strategy global it strategy etc etc so from global strategy we are we have now derived the global marketing strategy so you may just think of a just in time inventory and manufacturing system that works for a single manufacturing facility to optimize production extend this concept now to finance and marketing and include all subsidiaries of the firm across the world one can imagine the magnitude and complexity of the task when a manager is attempting to develop and implement a global strategy because there are so many functions and so many so many countries to look at one implication is that without a global strategy for r&d manufacturing and finance the that meshes with various requirements of its global marketing strategy a firm cannot best implement that global marketing strategy so now the implication of this uh, statement is that the global strategy will lead to the global marketing strategy and it is not the other way around because when we are deriving global marketing strategy from global strategy similarly we will be deriving the global hr strategy global it strategy global finance strategy and operations strategy etc now these different strategies should be integrated therefore there is a need to derive all these strategies from global strategy and not the other way around because if you have independent global uh, operation strategy global finance strategy global marketing strategy then they will not come together and make a global strategy so this process has to be from top to down now look at the degree of standardizability of products in world markets in dark blue it is could be shared uh, shared globally in light blue it is must modified it should be modified locally and on the left hand side it is local and on the right hand side we are universal now look at the example cultural habits are local and therefore the marketing concept technology product application they should be modified locally while the product concept can be global in nature for example fish sauce, sausages root beer boxer shot and rice cooker similarly as we move on to design taste 
for example, furniture, refrigerators, proce processed food. Therefore, marketing concept and product application should be modified locally while, uh, uh, while technology can be global in nature. Moving on to language, world processors and computers, the marketing concept should be localized, technology can, uh, should be globalized, again the product application can be localized and the product concept can be globalized. And let us move on to the size and packaging similarly to technical system and then to user application. So, portable radio cassettes players and uh, white liquor etc. the marketing concept has to be localized while the rest of the things the technology, the product application and the product concept can be globalized. Watches, motorcycles, petrochemicals, piano, money that is the capital market everything can be shared globally. It is to be shared globally, it does not mean that it is standardized. So, global and standardization does not go hand in hand. Now, coming to the next concept of R&D operations and marketing interface, as I had mentioned earlier, global ma manager should look at these three functions as an integrated whole and not as three different functions. So, marketing managers cannot develop a, su a successful marketing strategy without understanding how other functional areas such as R&D and operations influence the degree of their marketing decision making as well as how these functions may be influenced by them. So, in order to market they have to first understand the interface of operations and R&D. So, what can be developed, whether it can be manufactured and then they have to decide how it is to be marketed. There are three more most important integrated activities in the value chain. The first is R&D that is the technology development, product development and engineering. The second is operations that is manufacturing and the third is marketing activities. So, these are the three most important activities in the value chain. And we have talked about value, uh, the value chain concept and we looked at a firm as a collection of value adding activities. So, these are the three value adding activities. All three of them should work in conjunction adding value to each other so that at the end of the day firm becomes a collection of value adding activities. So, marketing managers should understand and appreciate the important role that the product designers, engineers, production managers and purchasing manager, managers play in marketing decision making. Marketing decisions cannot be made in the absence of these people. So, management of the interface or linkages among these value adding activities is the crucial determin determinant of company's competitive advantage. When you are able to manage them, that leads to competitive advantage. If they are not properly managed, the linkages between these three, then you are losing out on competitive advantage. Look at the interface, these three interfaces. So, we uh, between R&D and operations, there is one. Between operations and marketing, two. And between R&D and marketing, it is three. So, let us look at, uh, at the first that is R&D and manufacturing interface. So, we are talking about things like product innovation, designing for manufacturability, manufacturing process innovation and component sourcing. At two that is the interface between the operations and marketing, we are talking of product and component standardization and product modification. At three that is R&D and, and marketing interface, we are talking of new product development and product positioning. Now, R&D and operations interface means, means these are the three interfaces, R&D and operation interface, operation and marketing interface where we, where we will talk about core component standardization, product design families, universal products with all features and universal product with different positionings. Uh, with different positioning. Here we will talk about what kind of product should be developed so that they can be manufactured. In marketing and R&D uh, R&D interface, uh, manufacturing marketing people they give the customer inputs to R&D so that they are able to come up with uh, with uh, with the products that uh, satisfy the customer needs, and then it goes to R&D and operations interface. Uh, the operations people will uh, will make that kind of product. We will talk about them in in a moment. Now, look at the interface of R&D and manufacturing. What is technology? Technology is broadly defined as know-how. It can be classified based on the nature of know-how, 
composed of product technology that is the set of ideas embodied in the product and process technology that is se set of ideas involved in the manufacture of the products or the step ne steps necessary to combine new material to produce a finished product. So, we are talking of the product and the process uh, innovation, product technology and process technology. Executives tends to focus solely on product related technology as a driving force for the company's competitiveness and they, uh, and they lose focus on the process related technology. Product technology alone may not provide the company a long term competitive edge over competition unless it is matched with sufficient manufacturing cap capability. So, one is the product technology should be backed by manufacturing technology and product technology may not always lead to the competitive advantage the companies they also have to look at the process uh, technology. So, a continual conflict exists between manufacturing operations and marketing. It is to the manufacturing's division advantage if all the product and components are standardized to facilitate standardized low cost production. So, they have to just keep on making the same thing and therefore, the cost is reduced. The marketing division is more interested in satisfying the diverse needs of the customers. The, the, the customers have different needs, so therefore, they, they may need different kind of products. While manufacturing people uh, want that the same kind of product should be, should be produced over and over again. Requiring that, that requires broad product lines and frequent product modi modification which will add to the cost. So, they do not want uh, the broad product lines and frequent product uh, modifications, manufacturing people do not want this while marketing people want this so that they can, uh, they can uh, easily sell the product. How can successfully successful company cope with this dilemma? Marketing wants different products while manufacturing wants the same product to be produced over and over again. With aggressive competition from, from now, now look at the, uh, the interface of manufacturing and marketing. With the aggressive competition from multinational companies across the world emphasizing corporate product policy and concomitant manufacturing. Companies have realized that product innovation alone cannot sustain their long term competitive position without an effective product policy linking product and manufacturing process innovation. The strategic issue then is how to design a robust product or component with sufficient versatility built in across users technology and situation. So, here we are talking of a product or component that can be used across different situations. Four different ways of develop, developing a global product policy are generally considered an effective means to streamline manufacturing op and operation, manufacturing operations thus lowering manufacturing cost without sacrificing on marketing flexibility. So, now how can we manufacture different products so that uh, marketing people are able to sell it and at the same time we are manufacturing different product while keeping the cost low, how that can be done. And these are the four options that uh, can be used for that. First is core component standardization. The second is product design families. The third is universal product with all features and universal product with different positioning. Here we are, we are uh, uh, standardizing the core component. Then here we have design families. Then you have a universal product with all features that is sold to every customer across the world. For example, your Microsoft office. Then here you have core component standardization for example, computers core components remain the same and then you can have different kind of combination and in automobiles they use product design families and then there are universal products with different positioning. So, the product remains the same the positioning uh, is changed depending upon the segment that the company is targeting. Now, let us look at the interface of R and D and marketing. We have talked about the interface of manufacturing and marketing. Now, we will talk about the interface of R and D and marketing. Both R and D and manufacturing activities are technically outside the marketing manager's responsibility, but marketing manager's knowledge of the consumer need is indispensable in product development. Without a good understanding of custom consumer needs, product designers and engineers are are prone to impose their technical specifications on, on the product rather than fitting them to what consumer wants. So, what will happen is that we will be putting the, uh, the cart before the horse. 
if uh, uh, the if there is no interface between marketing and r and d the technical people they will make pr product according to their uh, uh, specifications and then they will ask marketing people to sell those product while it it, uh, it has to be the other way around now comes we will shift on to the next topic uh, in this module that is regionalization of global marketing strategy so now you think that we are talking of global marketing strategy on the one hand and at the same time we are talking of regionalization of that so some firms may have difficulty in organizing or may not be willing to organize operations to maximize flexibility and and encourage integration across national borders beyond various cultural political and economic difference across national borders organization realities also impair the ability of multinational firms to pursue global marketing strategy integration has often been opposed by foreign subsidiaries eager to protect their historical relative independence from their parent companies so now the the subsidiaries they want their independence because they have enjoyed the independence uh, historically therefore they do not want to follow, follow a global marketing strategy in finding a balance between the need for greater integration and the need to exploit existing resources more effectively many companies have begun to explore the use of regional strategies so now we are not moving from regional to global but we are moving from global to regional so regional strategies can be defined as cross subsidization of market share battles in pursuit of regional production branding and distribution advantage Regional strategies have been encouraged by economic, political, and social pressures resulting from the development of regional trading blocks. So now you have different marketing strategies in different trading blocks, and trading blocks are, blocks are generally regional. Therefore, now we have regional marketing strategies. So regional trading blocks have had two favorable effects. The first is the volatility of foreign exchange is lower within the block. Second, the growing level of macroeconomic integration. with with regions the trend is also towards greater harmonization of product and industry standards pollution and safety standards and environmental standards among other thing so within a block the foreign exchange fluctuations they are lesser one the standards of products they are similar and then these regional commonalities further encourage firms to develop marketing strategies on a regional basis so marketing strategy cannot be developed without considering competitive and other market forces from different regions around the world to face these regional forces proactively three additional strategies need to be considered at the firm level and they are the cross subsidization of markets one identification of weak market segments two and use of lead market concept that is three now what does cross subsidization of market means essentially it is that you earn money in one market and then you invest it invest the money in another market or you are earning profits in one market or and you are making losses in another market therefore this is how you cross subsidize the markets so this it refers to a multinational firms using profit gains in one market where they have a strong competitive position to beef up their competitive position in a market where they are struggling to gain a foothold the second strategy that firm should to allow or follow is the identification of weak market segments not covered by a firm in its home market the solution may be to look at the main requirements of each lead lead market in turn and lead market is the market where unique local competition is nurturing product and service standards to be adopted by the rest of the world over time so where a new product is developing that is what uh, what our lead market is now how to go about doing that is the last component of this uh, module competitive analysis how to analyze competitors so firms needs to need to broaden the sources of competitive advantage relentlessly over time however careful assessment of a firms current competitive position is also required so the firm should first assess the competitive uh, the current competitive competitive position so that they can work on the competitive advantage and for that we use swot that is strength weaknesses opportunities and threats analysis a swot analysis divides the information in two main categories internal and external factors 
based on SWOT analysis, marketing executives can construct alternative strategies. So, to strength, to to match strengths with opportunities or to match strengths with threats. The aim of any SWOT analysis should be to isolate the key issues that may be important to the future of the firm and that will be addressed by subsequent marketing strategy. So, this is what we are talking about. On the x-axis, we have internal factors that are strengths and weaknesses. On the y-axis, we have external factors that is the opportunities and threats. Strength can be a brand name, human resources management, know-how, technology, advertising, etc. Weakness can be price or the lack of resource, financial resources, long product development cycles, dependence on independent distributors, etc. Opportunity can be mark, growth, mark, uh, growth market, favorable investment uh, uh, environment, deregulation, stable exchange rates, patent protection, etc. While the threats can be the threat from new entrants, change in consumer preferences, new environmental protection laws, local content requirement, etc. Now, the four alternative strategies that uh, that comes up uh, from SWOT analysis are when you match strengths with opportunities. So this is the first, or you match or you ma or you match weaknesses with opportunity. Then again, you match strengths with threats, or you match weaknesses with threats. So one plain simple first offhand option is matching strengths with opportunities that is develop a strategy to maximize the strengths and gain opportunities. Second can be to match your weaknesses with opportunities, develop a strategy to minimize weaknesses and maximize opportunities. In the third we develop a strategy to maximize the strengths and minimize the threat while in fourth we develop a strategy to minimize weaknesses and minimize threats. The internal factors may be viewed as strengths or weaknesses. Depending on the impact of the firm position, they may represent strengths for one firm but weakness for another. So, these are not standard uh, things that can be taken uh, for every company. External factors gain may be threats to one firm and opportunities to another including technological change, legislation, social, socio-cultural changes and changes in marketplace or competitive position. SWOT is just one aid to categorize, it is not the only technique, there are several other techniques also. One drawback of SWOT is that it tends to persuade companies to compile list rather than think about what is really important to their business. It also presents the result, resulting list uncritically without clear prioritization, so that for example, weak opportunities may appear to balance strong threats. Furthermore, using the company's strengths against its competitors' weaknesses may, may work once or twice, but not over several dynamic strategic interactions as its approach become pre predictable and competi competitors begin to learn and outsmart it. So, you cannot, a company cannot always keep on using its strengths to counter the, uh, the uh, competitors' weaknesses because that strategy becomes predictable and then uh, it loses out on the competitive advantage. Therefore, in this module, we have learnt about global, global marketing strategy, its benefits and limitations. We saw that global marketing strategy cannot function in isolation, it has to be in combination with other, other, uh, uh, other strategies that are, uh, that are derived from global strategy. The marketing manager should understand and appreciate the important roles of R&D, manufacturing and marketing and their integration, the trend towards Regionalization of global marketing strategy is also to be dealt with and for further understanding uh, these concepts you can use these two books. Thank you.